Whether you're a Linux home user or a system admin, backing up files is a must. Backing up files is as simple as copying important files to an external drive or a network share. The problem with this simple solution is the amount of space the files take up. In this section, we'll create a script to automate backing up data using the inbuilt scheduling system and we'll use archiving and compressing to reduce the size of the backup. We'll create a script to automatically backup selected directories on a weekly basis. In Unit 2, we learned that the var directory is for changeable files like log files. In most Linux systems, system log files are stored in the var log directory and we'll put our log file here. We create a variable called log location to hold the path to the var directory. Next, we create some functions that perform specific tasks to make the script work. This function will check for a config file that contains full paths of directories we want to backup. This function checks for a config file that holds the location of where the backup will be saved to. The next function will check to see if a schedule has been set up for backups to run on a weekly basis. Lastly, we use this function to perform the process of archiving, compressing and sending the selected directories to the backup location. We add an echo placeholder to the empty functions to avoid any errors during testing. We use an if statement and use a file comparison clause with an exclamation point to test if the file doesn't exist. We also add the exit command with the code of 1. This means the rest of the script won't run unless the file has been created. We do the same for the next function, checking for the backup location config file. The inbuilt scheduling system for Linux is called cron, which is a service that looks in special directories to see if any scripts are scheduled to run. The cron directories are in the etc directory. These four directories are where scripts should be copied that need to run on a schedule. We can tell the system to run scripts daily, hourly, monthly and weekly by simply copying scripts into the correct directory. This directory is used to run a script at a particular time other than daily, hourly, monthly and weekly. Any files in this directory use a special schedule format and point to the script or command to be run. This backup script will run weekly, so this function checks to see if the script isn't in the cron.weekly directory. Scripts copied to the cron directories usually don't have the .sh extension. If the script isn't there, we copy it without the .sh file extension to the cron.weekly directory. We use sudo because the directory is owned by root. We end the function with some feedback and the exit command.
The current tab file shows when the daily, hourly, weekly and monthly schedules are due to run. The special time format shows the day of the week, the hour and the minute that all scripts in the cron.weekly directory are due to run. The week starts on Monday and so the weekly scripts will run on the 7th day, Sunday at 6.47 in the morning. In this function, we add the logic for the backup process. We create a variable with the location of where to send the backup to by using the cat command with the config file. Next, we add a comment for the log and then set up a while loop which loops through each line in the backup directory's config file. Each line contains the path of each directory to backup, so we name the variable in the loop directory path. In this loop, we'll archive, compress, and send the backup to the backup location. After the loop, we add a comment to the log showing the date and time of when the backup was completed. We can bundle files and directories into archives and then compress them to save space using the tar command. Tar is able to archive, compress and uncompress existing archives. Let's archive Homer's home directory by using options with the tar command. The C option creates the archive. The V option displays progress on screen and the F option tells tar the archive will be a file. The file is named archive1 with the tar file extension and this is followed by the source directory to archive. The files are owned by Homer so we use sudo to gain full permission to create an archive. We see the archive has been created. We use the T option to look inside the archive. We can also use the Z option to compress the archive in the same command. The tar.gz file extension is used for a compressed archive. If we compare the two files, we can see the compressed file is much smaller than the archive file, which is why we use file compression for backups. Let's now finish the backup function in the script. We set up two variables in the while loop. The first is to extract the name of the directory being backed up using the base name command. The second is to create the name of the compressed archive file along with the full path of where the directory will be backed up to. Now we use the tar command to archive and compress the directory and send any errors to the log file by redirecting file descriptor 2. We leave out the V option because we want the script to run silently. This script will run automatically under the root account and when the files are backed up they will be owned by root. We change this by using the change mode command to make captain the owner and group of the backed up files.
To finish the script, we call the functions in the script. When the script is run, the first function checks for the first config file and exits if it doesn't exist. The user is told to create the file. Once the file has been created, the script gets to the second function which checks for the second config file and exits with a message to create the file. After creating the config file and running the script again, the third function copies the script to the cron.weekly directory and exits with this message. When we check for the file in the cron directory, we see the file is there. Now, on a weekly basis, the only function that will run is the last one, because the requirements of the first three functions has been met. If we now fast forward one week with the magic of video editing, we see the log file shows the script ran as expected. We can also see the backed up directories archived and compressed in our backup location. When the script runs next week, these files will be replaced when the tar command runs again. In the event of a disaster like the computer's hard drive failing, we could restore these files by using the tar command with the X option to extract the archive. When restored, tar restores the directory with its full directory structure intact. The backup script created in this section automated backups for important files and used file archiving, file compression and scheduling to get the job done.